So today's lesson, we're talking about the importance of understanding your chord theory with knowing your intervals. So if, for example, we're just talking about uh, a major chord, let's just say D major, we're going to want to know the root third and the fifth immediately. So D, F sharp, A, you know, we have that as our rudiments or where we start off with, with understanding our chord theory. So finding those patterns on the neck is a really great way to kind of get started with formulating bass lines and starting to understand where you can move through the neck and be able to create your own bass line. So let's just go through a couple of different examples, starting off with D, our fifth fret on our A string. So if we're starting, let's say, with our a pretty standard kind of position, our second finger over top of the fifth fret. Now, if we want to go to the third, my first finger over top of the fourth fret on the D string, that's our F sharp. And then my fourth finger fits right over top of the fifth, which is the seventh fret on the D string right there. So that's your A. Root third and fifth right there. Now, these patterns can change like as we're kind of moving through the neck. So uh, there's two other positions that I would pr are pretty common when it comes to uh, making these types of jumps. So if we have our first finger on D, then we're going to stretch up to the ninth fret for F sharp with our fourth finger. And then we can go back with our second finger onto the seventh fret again for A. So that's the other type of position that I would probably recommend. Now you don't want to be doing that all the way down here on like B flat or anything like that. It's just too far of a stretch. So at that point you have to use other positions and other patterns in order to be able to formulate these types of movements. Um, another one is if we're starting with our fourth finger on D. So fourth and then we go to the F sharp like we did before, the fourth fret and the D string, but this time using our third finger and then our first finger down to the second fret for A on the G string. So there's your root third and fifth in that position. Now these patterns are going to come in real handy depending on where you are on the neck and what notes you need to try and hit. Um, if you're creating your own bass lines, these are really great like kind of building blocks almost to kind of create your own bass line. So, um, and so this is just understanding one type of chord. This is understanding just like a major triad. Nothing fancy about it, no additional tensions or anything like that. When we start going into adding sevenths or sixths or you know thirteenths or uh, sharp elevens, anything like this, this is where like knowing your chord theory and understanding the key in what you're playing in is very very important. So your best bet is to kind of just go and start digging into some of these scales and starting to understand what these different intervals represent and what notes they they represent. So. Uh, a great key to kind of get started off with is C. No sharps or flats in that one. So it's a great one to kind of just mess around with and get familiar with all the different interval jumps in there. So if we have C and we want to play, let's say, we want to play a ninth. Okay, so a ninth is a little bit, kind of, it can be scary, I suppose, if you don't understand what it is. But if you go through all the scale degrees, you'll realize that C one octave up is the eighth. So we're really only going to the second right there, which is going to be D. So when we play C, we play a ninth over top of that, it's separated by an octave, and we're just playing a D over top of C. Now this goes for elevenths, which would be going through all the scale degrees again, you start hitting your fourth, and then the thirteenth being your sixth. And now that's pretty much like the only real tensions that you'll come across that are extended beyond the initial uh, scale. Um, then besides that, you're talking about your sixth and your sevenths and whatnot. So understanding when to apply a flat is important. So for example, when we're talking about uh, just C7. C7 is a dominant chord. Dominant chord meaning that it has major third, fifth, and then a flat seventh besides the root. They're very unstable kind of chords. They want to, they want to resolve constantly. They want to constantly be moving from like a five to one 
and then so on and so forth. Five to one. And keep moving and moving and moving and moving. They never really settle down. Uh, but knowing that you could pretty much play a, almost a major scale, except you have to flat the seventh on that, that gives you like an entire scale to kind of mess around with when formulating a base, uh, bass line. So take that into consideration and apply it to some tunes. You know, Go through and play some 12-bar blueses because that's all going to be like the dominant sevens or minor sevens, depending if it's a minor chord or not. But play some dominant seventh uh, 12 bar blueses and utilize that base uh, that base scale of just going through and it'll, uh, over top of C right here it would be like uh, one two three four five six flat seven to your octave. So if I go finger numbers through the the strings right there two four one two four one two four a great way to kind of get started. But you have to do the legwork you have to apply it and practice going through and seeing which lines work the best and what you like and what you don't like everyone's ear is going to be a little bit different so the more you experiment with it the more comfortable you are with the scale the easier these things become uh, this applies with your minor scales your major scales diminished scales anything like that it can all be scary until you start applying it and practicing it regularly so i hope this is helpful for you if you have any questions uh shoot me a message. I'll be glad to give you a hand and help you out, answer any questions you might have. Uh, if you're not an online bass lessons user, you can subscribe to this page and then you can follow the link below, which will bring you to my website and you can get more information on becoming an online bass lessons user there. Thank you so much and enjoy.